Hey, I'm here with Lior to talk about the Azure Arc Jumpstart. So stay tuned. Hey, Lior, how are you doing? Hey, Thomas, how's it going? Good, good, can't complain. I'm happy <laughs> to have you on Azure Unblock today. Um, obviously, you did a lot of work uh, on Azure Arc. Can you explain me a little bit about, first of all, who you are and what you're working on, yeah, and then sure. your thoughts on Azure Arc? Yeah, sure. So my name is Lior Kamrat. Uh, I've been to Microsoft uh, for uh, a bit more over than five years now. Um, currently, I'm a cloud solution architect as part of the US One Commercial Partner subsidiary. Uh, I did multiple roles in Microsoft, including Microsoft um, or Azure Engineering. Um, and now I'm kind of leading the Azure Arc uh, practice um, alongside with my colleagues um, in the US uh, One Commercial Partner subsidiary. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's, that's really, really cool. So obviously, you mentioned uh, the Azure Arc Jumpstart project, and that's why we're here. But first of all, um, obviously, the key thing is is about Azure Arc. So, what are your thoughts about Azure Arc here? Yeah, I think Azure Arc is, is pretty much a game changer when it comes to the to the hybrid play. Um, uh, I think I said it before. Uh, you know, before Azure Arc, I don't believe we really had like a hybrid a hybrid story from the context of. Um, stretching control planes or more from the software layer. It was always about um, things like you know Azure Stack that I know you're very much involved with and all that. But those were pretty much like, I want to say hardware or physical oriented solutions. Um, but I think that Azure Arc brings something a bit different. Uh, it looks at the hybrid notion from a very different angle. And that angle is really about stretching our control plane, Azure Resource Manager or you know, some may say the operating system of Azure. Um, and that's really kind of what we're talking about. Um, this concept of um, looking at resources or infrastructure or services, applications that are deployed outside of Azure, to me, it's very interesting because I think that, you know, we all, I think at this point know that hybrid is here to stay. Um, and I actually like it. You know, I, I don't think we need to be, you know, disruptive when it comes to how users are operating their business. I think we need to complement that. So I think that's where Azure Arc comes into place and plays, you know, a key role in that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, you hit a very important point there, and I think that is that is one of the key essential. Azure Arc is not just like some way you connect some resources, right? It really connects it in a way that it actually is an Azure resource and it is right. part of the Azure Resource Manager. Right. So you created something very awesome for Azure Arc, and it's called the Azure Arc Jumpstart Project. Can you tell me a little bit more about um, like why you started that project and actually what the Jumpstart is? Yeah, sure. And you know, as you can see here in the and, you know in the screen that I'm sharing, this is the Azure Arc Jumpstart website. And uh, you know, to give the audience a bit of background around the you know the Jumpstart project. So the Jumpstart project really started from the notion of how do we how do we go by and document um, processes and deployment guides for um, resources or infrastructure that is outside of Azure? You know, before I started the Jumpstart project, you know, when I started looking at Azure Arc, um, I thought to myself, all right, you know, it's all good, but how do we actually go by and teach people how to use it if those resources are, or the resources that Azure Arc is looking at are deployed outside of Azure? So at this point, I just started to write few automations um, on different scenarios, right, for Kubernetes. And, um, and I started with servers, and then I moved to Kubernetes and kind of you know, started looking at Google Cloud Platform and AWS. And eventually, I got to a point that I had like five, six, or seven scenarios, something like that. Um, and at this point, I thought to myself, all right, you know, I think I have something here. I think that we are starting to understand how to write documentations for um, deployment guides for things that are outside of Azure. Um, if you look at the Azure Docs, right, we're doing a very good job on documenting our own stuff. Uh, but Azure Arc is unique in the sense that it literally, by design, touches everything that is outside of Azure. So, uh, you know, that's how the Jumpstart project started. And I really wanted to, you know, make these guides accessible. Um, so that's really kind of the history there. Um, you know, there are a few design 
and key and key principles to this to this repository or this project. It started as a repository, and then we kind of launched the website that you know you guys are seeing right now. Um, so I was joined by three other colleagues of mine, um, other cloud solution architects from um, from across the world. Right, we have Laura Nicolas; she's um, a CSA from Spain. We have Dale Kirby and Ali Hussein. Ali Hussein is they are also CSAs um, as part of US, and they joined me uh, to do this project. So, you know, really the key design principles are, you know, to make it easy, um, you know, off the shelf scenarios, making sure that you're not going to fail, making sure that you will be successful with this technology, making sure that you will understand the value proposition of, of Azure Arc and, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, enjoy the ride while you're doing so. No, I'm I'm super glad that you did you created that project um, because it makes it super easy for us to like when you create a demo um, or when you need to do a POC, um, then it makes it super easy to have these steps and just run these scripts and build that like the, your, the automation you build around it to make it super easy to try something out. Yeah. And this is especially helpful with like things like Azure Arc, obviously, which covers so many different platforms and features and products and services. And so it's very like very tough and a very large set. And speaking of that, um, so obviously, as I mentioned, Azure Arc is a is a large part and covers that many different uh, topics and features and products. Um, what is covered by the uh, Azure Arc Jumpstart? Yeah, good question. So uh, really, this is what we are here to talk about. So. Um, you know, Azure Arc has different uh, types of solutions, right? It's a set of technologies um, that, again, is all about governing and, and managing resources and applications outside of Azure. So today with Azure Arc, as you know, we have Azure Arc enabled servers, Kubernetes, SQL Server, and data services. And uh, to this point, we're covering all of these four pillars. And if you look at the, you know, if you look at the structure of, of the project and the website, you're gonna see that we have, <clears throat> we're gonna, you're gonna see that we have, for example, let's take data services, right? If I'll go into data services, you will see that we are covering um, all three, you know, all three biggest hyperscalers, right? Obviously ourselves, AWS and Google Cloud Platform. We also have kind of automation for on-premises. And if I'll go into each one of those, right? I'll go to Google Kubernetes Engine, just as an example. We are, you know, we're, what we're trying to do, we're trying to cover um, all our bases, right? We're trying to make sure that, um, you know, if you want to do SQL managed instance with data services, you will have the automation for that. Or if you want to do Postgres, you are going to have the automation for that. For automations that are not Azure Resource Manager templates based, right? ARM, um, we are actually providing Terraform plans, right? Because it's kind of became the de facto standards for infrastructure as code and automation. So why not? So really, the Jumpstart covers all the ARC pillars, right? I'll go to Kubernetes. You're going to see that we even have more options, right? You can see the, the amount of platforms that we have automations for. And this is what we're trying to achieve, right? Besides the fact that we're providing uh, the bootstrap automations, right? The automation that will get you up and running. I think the more important piece is what do you actually do with Azure Arc, right? So, okay, so now you have a Kubernetes cluster or a server in GCP or in AWS. That's fine, but what do you do with that? So for each section, what we have is we have the unified operations use cases, right? And in the unified operation use cases, you're going to see some scenarios, again, automated ones to um, that highlight the value proposition, right? So for example, with Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, if you want to do GitOps, you have that there, right? Or if you if I'll go to servers, right? I'll go to servers and I see unified operation here. And you can see the, the amount of integrations that we have. And again, everything is uh, documented in an automated fashion. So really, the Jumpstart covers all of that. Um, and there today, we have um, probably around 60 scenarios already uh, for, you know, for Azure Arc and uh, more to come. Wow, that's that's insane. That's a huge amount of work uh, your team did there, um, especially because I know like uh, you obviously have like these different platforms. And as you said, it's not just Azure, right? It's really like connecting all these different platforms. So if I'm if I'm, for example, uh, want to connect my Kubernetes cluster running in AWS, 
I could just go to the Jumpstart platform and actually see how that would be onboarded and how I would add that, uh, especially how that works. And I would have my scenario, the same thing if I would do the same thing on a VMware platform or if I do it on a Hyper-V platform. So that that is absolutely great. Exactly. Um, I, I have to ask, um, obviously you were involved in writing all like these different scenarios. What was one of the like most interesting ones to write? Yeah. And obviously when you build something like this, there must be also a lot of testing and like automation in place. So can you sh share some insights how, how, how that works? Yeah. So we have a lot of kind of unique scenarios in the way that we are approaching them, right? Uh, the first thing that we're doing is we're trying to understand what will be the end result, right? What will be the user experience? Um, you know, I'll take, the, I'll take the data services, for example, right? If you look at Azure Arc enabled data services, it has these layers of um, infrastructure complexity, right? At first you have Azure and then you have Kubernetes and then you have the data services components and from there you actually have the services right sql or postgres right so the level of complexity can be pretty big right you have multiple layers so i'll go to the uh if i'll go to the data services here for a second and i'll take the uh again i'll go to uh to google right and i'll take the sql managed instance just as an example um under this scenario, to you know, to kind of answer your question here, on, also as you can see, we have all the prerequisites. How you actually go by and set up your Google environment, right? We are, you know, we're not assuming that you know Google, but we want you to know uh, the fundamental building blocks in order for you to get started. So we're also documenting this, right? But what I wanted to show you is this section right here, the automation flow. And the reason I'm showing you this because you asked, you know, what is the what are the interested interesting scenarios? So obviously all of the scenarios are unique in their own way, but I think that the data services are kind of kind of weird in the sense that, you know, we have the automation that will spin up the Kubernetes environment, right? And the Kubernetes environment then will go and will have all the data services on top of. But as part of that automation, we're also creating what we call um, a client tools virtual machine. And that virtual machine is you know if you're doing that in Google you're going to have a virtual machine in Google if if you're doing that in AWS you're going to have an EC2 instance or if you're doing that on top of Azure Kubernetes service right um, or AKS you're going to have an Azure VM and that client tools VM will have all the necessary tools in order for you to get going with the environment right so um, AZ Data CLI and um, Azure Data Studio. And as part of the automation, when you log in for the first time to that VM, it will complete the automation because one part is, you know, really the infrastructure is code piece, which is Terraform in that case. And then you also have a login script that will go and deploy all the data services on top of that Kubernetes cluster, right? And eventually the kick is you're going to have Azure Data Studio open and ready to go for you to start using. So that's one of the weirdest, you know, scenarios to design, but um, uh, to answer your question here. So you're just to, to, to think about the, the, the data services part. So you're not just deploying, obviously, the data services part, but you're actually giving me my admin or demo machine, which then allows me to actually interact with the data services part. I already have all the tools I need. So if I'm, for example, not an expert on, on, on SQL, but I want to show it to like my peers or others, and I'm setting this up, I even get the machine. Is that, that correct? Exactly, exactly. And what you see here, you know, I'm showing the screenshots as part of the as part of the automation. And you can see this is the process of deploying the data, the data controller. And from that point, you know, um, you're getting to a point that here you go, you have Azure Data Studio open. And, you know, to give you just a bit more, we're also restoring a sample sample database or a demo database into the environment. So you will not just have SQL instance, you're also going to have a database to show and to start playing with. So it's really an end to end user experience that we're trying to provide. Oh, that's super handy. Again, that makes it my life super easy. If I if I want to demo something, I can quickly go and, and deploy a jump start uh, without spending much time on it. By the way, speaking of time, um, so obviously like you built automation. I know um, like some scenarios are obviously different from others, but what is like, what do you expect? So if I want to try out like, let's say a service scenario, or what if I want to try out the data services scenario, if I start with the jumpstart until it's deployed, how long does it like take? So like depending on obviously depending on the scenario. Right. Well, 
the most complex scenarios, which are the data services, and when I'm saying complex, it's really about how much time it takes to deploy the thing, right? The moment that you are setting up your environment variables, and that's the only requirement we actually have, right? Because you need to set up your Azure subscription ID, tenant ID, you know, secrets and all that. But after you're doing that, really, you can be up and running in less than 30 minutes uh, for the most complex scenarios, right? Um, we have scenarios that will get you going after 10 minutes. Uh, really depends on you know the scenario and the automation, but uh, it's really fast. Um, and this is by design. That's the user experience that we wanted to provide you. Um, so yeah, no, that's awesome. So I heard that the Jumpstart project now also has a YouTube channel. Right, right. So in this ignite, we are announcing the Azure Arc Jumpstart YouTube channel. And the reason that we created in the Azure Arc uh, YouTube channel um, or the Azure Arc Jumpstart YouTube channel is to provide you with what we like to call lazy demos. And lazy demos are basically um, five to 12, 13 minutes demos that are showing you how a jumpstart scenario will look like if you don't want to do it yourself, right? Because some people, you know, they, you know, for them, it's good enough to see the demo and understand the concept, you know. Uh, so we wanted to provide them with a way to see the experience without actually uh, doing the work. And that's why we're calling them, you know, lazy demos. Um, so um, we're going to launch with um, a disignite, like I said, and we're going to have around 15 demos um, uh, to get started with. And obviously, we're going to add more of these demos um, in the future uh, to cover all the art technologies that uh, that we have in the jumpstart and the ones that are going to come um, and they are in the roadmap. Awesome. Now, I really like the, the idea with these these short videos and explaining the scenario and showing how, how it works. Um, really happy. Looking forward to the YouTube channel. Obviously, absolutely going to subscribe to it. Um, then, obviously, I mean, this is a lot of work, right? Um, and you already mentioned you work with a couple of people. Um, is there anything like you, anyone else in the team you want to mention and like who are you working with? Yeah, so you know, besides the fact that we are a core team of four architects, um, uh, we are working super closely with the product group and the engineering folks in the Azure Arc, right? And the Jumpstart project is actually internally being endorsed, you know, by the product group. So um, obviously, you know, the level of support and the partnership that we have with um, the Azure Arc engineering and Azure in general, right? It's it's just amazing, you know, to take in a, an open source project and a community driven open source project and to have that endorsed by Azure engineering and Azure marketing and the field um, is just amazing. And we are super appreciate, you know, everyone's support and, you know, we, we're we looking to 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 go bigger um, with this. So yeah, there's a lot of people that contribute. There's also people that contribute outside of the, outside of the project, right? External to Microsoft. So um, again, we, our goal is to make this a very much community, 100% driven project. Oh, that's awesome. I love that we obviously can also help and contribute uh, to the project itself. Um, so with that, I'm obviously super interested in Jumpstart project and obviously um, I want to learn more. So quick question, where do I go if I want to learn more? Yeah, so it's pretty, you know, it's pretty straightforward. The Azure Arc uh, Jumpstart project is in azurearcjumpstart.io. Uh, you can go today, you can start looking at this. Um, you know, obviously the repo the project is backed by a GitHub repository. So if you prefer that, you can go into the GitHub repository in the about page um, of the uh, of the project, and that's how you get started. Oh, that's super cool. No, thank. I have to say thank you very much uh, for being on Azure Unblocked. It was super good to have you here and speak about the Azure Arc Jumpstart project. A lot of good stuff there. And um, again, I hope everyone tries out some of the jump starts and joins the YouTube channel. With that, I want to say thank you, Lior, and thank you obviously also goes to the team uh, for providing all these jump starts. And for you guys, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in another video.